Finding the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix. Here is a 3x3 three three matrix. We're going to find the inverse by using the Gauss-Jordan technique. And what is the Gauss-Jordan technique? Uh, it involves taking your square matrix, in this case it's matrix A, augment it with the identity, and then perform some elementary row operations. until you actually get the identity on the left side of the augmented matrix and then you get a matrix B on the right hand side and that if this happens then we actually will rename that matrix B to be the inverse of A so let's attempt to find the inverse of A using the Gauss-Jordan technique Let's set up our 3 by 6 augmented matrix. And we're going to use elementary row operations to get the leading one in the upper left hand corner. So let's switch row 2 and row 1. This is now row equivalent, and we use a tilde symbol to show row equivalent. 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, negative 2, 1. Row 3 never changed. And then we have 0, 1, 0 here, 1, 0, 0 here. Now we're ready to go negative 2, negative 2, row 1, added to row 2, which is now row equivalent to, row 1 didn't change, so I'm going to just recopy that. And so really in this procedure, there's a lot of copying, not a lot of thinking. And then row 2 is going to change. We get 0, 5, we get negative 2, we get a 1, we get another negative 2, and we get a 0. Now our goal is to get a leading 1 in the second row in the middle position. It will be nice to avoid fractions and to make this a leading one here. Okay, It would be nice to get this to be a one and avoid fractions at the same time. So instead of multiplying by one-fifth row two, we're going to do an elementary row operation where we can multiply a single row and add it to another row. So I'm going to go two times row three and add it to row two. Let's write that out. 2 times row 3 and add it to row 2. We are going to store in row 2. This is now row equivalent to row 1 doesn't change. Row 3 doesn't change. It's very important that you just copy the rows that don't change. It helps you prevent some of those uh, little tiny mistakes. Row 2 does change. So remember, 2 times row 3 and then add it to row 2. So we get our 1 here. We get a 0 here. We get a 1 here. We get a negative 2 here. And we get a 2 here. Now we would want this part to be a 0. So we're going to go 2 times row 2 and add it to row 3. I'm going to erase the board a little bit. Let's erase that. When I write matrices, I tend to work uh, down. So from top to bottom, now that I ran out of room, I am going to go 
start all the way up at the top and be very very neat again this is row equivalent to row one and row two does not change one negative one one zero one zero zero one zero one negative two two now row three does change we got a zero and we got a zero here and we got a one here which is gorgeous and now we have a two here we have a negative four here and we have a five here now I'm going to pivot from the bottom row I'm going to do negative row three and add to row one and now we're storing in row one that means row two and row three doesn't change so I'm going to just copy those once again one of the key things about this is just be very very neat be very very precise and if you do make a mistake it's really hard to find it so you might end up having to start the problem all over again let's change row one now we got a zero here we have negative two here a five here and we got a negative five right there one last step here we're going to do row two add it to row one so once again we're storing in row one only row one changes let's copy row two and row three again And only row one changes one zero zero and we got one added to negative two negative one three and negative three ah gorgeous okay so it looks like we do have the identity now augmented with that matrix b well instead of calling it matrix b we're going to go ahead and name it the inverse of a so the inverse of a is bracket negative 1 3 negative 3 1 negative 2 2 and then 2 negative 4 5 notice the inverse of a is also a 3 by 3 matrix and there you go beauty